Hello there guys, it's me again Unstable Voltage with another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. Recently a lot of you have been asking me if I'm going to cover bees and so far I've avoided it simply because even though bees is a part of the forestry mod it is big enough to be a mod on its own and if you're playing Feed the Beast Ultimate where you have extra bees and thaumatic bees you have a total of well over 130 different species and variants of bees. But you've asked for it, so I'm going to do my best to teach you about bees and bee breeding, and we're going to start with the basics. So, the first thing we're going to need is somewhere for the bees to live, and this is the apiary. I'm going to teach you how to build this, I'm also going to show you how you can collect bees, and teach you the basics of bee breeding. Well guys, good thing is, you don't need to worry about the beekeeper's outfit, that was just me having a little bit of fun. The truth is, the vast majority of the bees in Feed the Beast don't actually cause the player any harm at all. There are a few, but you shouldn't really be experiencing them until later on in the game. So the first thing I'm going to need to do before I can build my apiary is to get some seed oil. So I have a couple of empty cells here, which I will feed, uh, fill with seed oil. Now, this means you're going to, at the very least, need to have a squeezer and some seeds. You don't need to take the seed oil from a tank. You could just put your empty cells or empty tins in the squeezer and fill it up directly but I do have some seed oil so I will now head on back to the workshop and now I'm back in the workshop I'm going to turn the power on first because the reason we need the uh, seed oil cell is for the carpenter so I've disconnected the water supply from my carpenter and drained out the remaining water using pipettes I'm going to put a seed oil cell in the carpenter and that will put the seed oil in as you can see and then you basically need some um, wooden logs and the recipe for this is quite simply uh, a square with a space in the middle and that will create for us hopefully an impregnated casing and there we go we have our impregnated casing let's just get rid of that recipe there now if you do have any uh, seed oil left in your carpenter the best thing to do is make a pipette they're nice and easy to make all you need is two glass panes and a piece of wool and that will make you a pipette go into your carpenter click the pipette and then right click on the tank and that will take out what is left in there. You may need more than one pipette because it depends how much liquid you've got. So there we go, we have our impregnated casing. And the next step is at the crafting table and this is nice and easy. The impregnated casing goes in the middle, three wood slabs across the top and then five wooden planks in the remaining spaces will give you your apiary. So let's go and find somewhere to put that down. So in order to collect some bees, we're going to need to scoop them out of their hives, and for that, we're going to need to build scoops. Now, scoops are nice and easy to build, mainly made out of sticks. What you need to do is make a sort of a Y configuration in a crafting table. So that is fill the crafting table with sticks apart from the top, middle, and the bottom two corner slots. And then one piece of wool in the top middle slot will give you a scoop. I'm going to make a few of these. They do last quite well. They are rather durable, but it's always worth taking quite a few with you, especially if you're going on a bee expedition. So now we've got our scoops, we want to go and look for beehives. Unfortunately, these things don't stack, so you're not going to be able to take too many with you. But off we go. Now you've probably already seen some beehives while you've been playing Feed the Beast because they pretty much spawn in every biome. Here's one that I did see earlier. They all look pretty similar to this, which is a block with a sort of honeycomb pattern on them. And simply all you do is take your scoop and left click to destroy it. And that will give you some bees. Now your scoop will take a little bit of durability damage, but you will get some bees from it. And in this case, we have a Meadows drone and we have a Meadows princess. Now these are pretty much the commonest bees that you will find, but I'm going to have a look around and see what else I can find. There are about 12 different species of bees that you will actually find in hives in various different biomes, and you can even find beehives in the desert, in snow biomes, you can find them in the jungle, you can also find them underwater, uh, buried under the ground in rocks, uh, and you can even find them in the end and in the nether. So there's another one, let's go and have a look around. I can see another one over there through the trees. So as you can see, it only takes a little bit of exploring and there are a lot of beehives dotted around all over the place. So let's go and get that one. Ah, now here we have some different colored bees. So what have we got this time? We've got a forest drone. 
a forest drone and a forest princess. So like I said, there are about 12 different types of bees in the various different hives that you find around, but you also do find some rare ones from time to time. So let's keep looking. Oh, and here's another one that was pretty much right outside the uh, back of my workshop. I've been noticing that for a while. Let's break that one. And what did we get from that? We have a marble princess and marble drones. Now, even though some bees are specific to certain biomes, that doesn't mean that those bees can only live in that biome. Providing you can artificially meet the requirements for them, you can pretty much get most bees to thrive anywhere. So let's keep looking around, see what else we can find. Well, I've got this alpine snow biome quite close to uh, my base, and there's another one here, if I can actually jump up and get to it. And what have we got in this one? It also looks like we've just got some more meadows drones. We also got some honeycomb from that. Now honeycomb is ultimately what each beehive is going to produce as an output. And honeycomb gives you various different things, obviously honey, uh, but in some cases some of the bees you can breed later on can produce all sorts of things including various different gemstones and different ores. So I'm going to keep looking, see what else I can find. Okay, I was just about to head away from this snow biome after a pretty disappointing lack of finds and I happened to notice this in the rocks over here. So, as I was saying, you can even find beehives hidden in rocks. If we break that, we get a couple of these grey ones and they are a rocky princess and a rocky drone. So, I'm going to keep looking, see what else I can find. Well, I've just walked over to this marsh biome and I have to admit, I think the world generation might have balked slightly when it created these two biomes next to each other, as we have an almost completely sheer cliff face uh, that appears to have been cut right down the middle. So, oh well, let's keep looking and see if we can find any more beehives. Now okay, you just saw me smash there what looked like it was another marbled hive. Now I wasn't actually saying anything while I was smashing it because it was my intention to cut that out. I thought it was just another marble hive, but when I actually checked it dropped a Valiant Princess. Now those are one of the rarer ones, so it's really really good that we've got that. Now it's starting to get dark, so I'm going to head back because uh, I've been pretty uh, down on my luck with finding any really interesting hives, so let's get back and make a start with the bees we have. Okay then guys, so just before I start, I've decided to move my apiary a little. It was over there near my uh, workshop, and I've decided to move it over here. A couple of reasons for that. One, my workshop is sort of on the intersection between about four different types of biomes, which can cause problems. Uh, also, I need the expansion room over there for something later on. And the bees do tend to start to take up a lot of room, and they put a lot of flowers down as well. Uh, also, I want to show you tree breeding in a future episode, and that will be useful if we actually have some trees around which I don't over there so I'm going to put my um, apiary down here now which direction is my basin that's over there so let's put, pop the apiary down there uh, I brought my chests with me as well so that I can put my bees in so let's put all the bees in here now que uh, princesses will never stack drones will if they are the same type so what I want to do is I'm going to take a Meadows Drone and a Meadows Princess, which are the most common type. Now, if we look at the interface for the apiary, you can see we have two inputs on the left, we have seven outputs on the right, and down the middle we have three spaces for frames, which are essentially upgrades for the apiary, and we will explore those on another video. On the right hand side here, the important things are the top two. Uh, this blue one will tell us what our climate is, the temperature and humidity. Very important for certain types of breed, uh, bees. But more importantly, in the top corner here, uh, this will tell us if there are any problems with this particular apiary. So here it says we have no queen. So what we do, in the input slots on the left hand side, you can see the top slot has a crown. We put our princess in the top slot and it now tells us we have no drone. So we put the drone in the bottom slot and this indicator here is uh, progress that the two are mating and what happens now the drone disappears and the princess becomes a fat queen got no problems here currently or so it says and we can already see that we've starting to get bees coming out of the apiary now these bees will go off and do their thing now there are certain requirements for certain different types of bees 
So for example, Meadows bees require the presence of flowers. Now as you can see, we have flowers around. And wild dogs, hello boy. Uh, don't have a bone for you, sorry. Um, so the flowers are required by the bees. Now also these particular types of bees need to have a clear line of sight to the sky. So if they were under ground or under leaves, you'd have to destroy them so that you, you had a clear path upwards to the sky. There are some bees that can actually work beneath trees, such as jungle bees, and bees from certain biomes have different requirements. So if you get bees from the desert biome, they require to have uh, cacti nearby, and if you get bees from a marsh or swamp biome, they require mushrooms nearby. And any particular preferences that bees have will appear on that red indicator up in the corner. Now what you can see now on the interface, now we have a queen in there, is the bar on the left hand side is actually now starting to decrease. When that eventually gets to the bottom, the queen in this apiary will die and we will get something in the output. So let's come back a little bit later and see what happens. Now I've just been back to base just to store up the honeycomb because we're going to need to build a regular centrifuge to make use of that because the industrial centrifuge just won't do. And while I was on my way back I also came across these purple flowers and that reminded me of something. When beehives require flowers the purple ones don't work because the purple flowers are actually added by one of the other mods. Now apparently there is a way to mess around with uh, config files to get the purple flowers to work but by default it's only the yellow and red flowers that work so just so you know. So while I was back at base I also got rid of all the extra scoops I had and I found some bones for our little friend here. Come here boy. Look I have I have bones for you. Come on, there you go. We have a little pet doggy now, awesome. Right, how's the hive getting on? Well, it's still working away, but not quite there yet, so let's leave it a little bit longer. So we're still waiting, and while that's going on, I'll explain a couple more things that we can do with bees. First of all, one thing you're going to notice is flowers will start to spread. Whenever you've got bees working nearby, the flowers will literally start to cover every spare bit of dirt on the, on the ground and you'll soon be knee deep in flowers. But you can see the bees are actually flying out towards the trees. And one of the things that bees do when they're near trees is they cross pollinate. So you will eventually start to get some of the trees where the leaves change colour and that indicates cross pollination. What we can then do is break those leaves with a grafter and that will give us a different breed of tree, potentially. But again, tree breeding is something that we're going to look at in future episodes, but I thought I'd mention it because having bees is an integral part of tree breeding. Another important thing worth mentioning about the bees, particularly most of the standard starting bees, is they will only work during the daylight, and they also won't work or won't work as effectively if it's raining or snowing. Now you can breed this out of future generations of bees, there are nocturnal bees, and there are even some bees that will just work through day and night without stopping. The ultimate goal of the bee breeding is to find the different species and different mutations of bees, breed them together to take the positive traits and benefits from each species, and create a new species that has the traits of both. Now some of the more advanced species and mutations are generations and generations away, so we don't have to worry too much about those just yet, but eventually we can have bees that produce things like copper, iron, gold, emeralds, rubies and sapphires, and lots of other interesting and useful things that we can only get directly from bees themselves. Okay, so while I was standing here watching, the bees suddenly disappeared and it's still daylight and there's no bad weather, so that must mean it is finished. And there we go, so what you can see now has happened is the queen has died and it has produced another Meadows Princess and two more drones. So once again, we can repeat the process by putting the princess back in and another drone and the process will repeat. Now what will happen is more often than not, you will get more bees back than you put in. So you're always going to end up with more and more bees. Every now and then you will also get honeycomb in the center slot. Now we were unlucky that time, we didn't get any, but uh, sometimes you get honeycomb when you break a beehive. 
and that is the ultimate product that we want to get from our hives but we'll have to look at that in a future video so guys I'd like to thank you once again for joining me on this video about the basics of bees and I hope that's given you enough to be able to start your collection and start with your bee breeding and I hope as always you found this video useful, informative and entertaining. If you have please like, share and subscribe because it really helps the channel grow and as always if you have any ideas for future videos, if there's a particular machine, item or mod that you'd like to see me build and demonstrate either leave me a message or put it in the comments below. Now as I said at the beginning the next few videos are probably going to be dedicated towards bees and some of the things we can do with them but because a lot of it is quite time consuming I might have to mix it up with other bits and pieces in the meantime so until then I have been Unstable Voltage and this has been How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft and I'll see you on the next video so goodbye for now